Welcome folks. Today's guest is local Hayesville attorney and real estate agent with Century 21 Black Bear Realty, Mickey Hendricks. Welcome Mickey. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you taking time out of your calendar. Where do you practice, Mickey? We have an office in Hayesville, uh, Hendricks and Hendricks. Uh, uh, it's my wife and myself, both attorneys. Okay. And tell me a little about your law firm. What areas of practice? Well, general civil practice, uh, like you would normally expect in a small town, uh, primarily real estate closings. Uh, but we also do uh, wills, um, uh, some estate work, some, um, some basic trust work, uh, and um, business law, such as incorporations. All right. Well, it's the real estate aspect I was hoping to discuss with you today. Uh, I know you've done years worth of real estate closings. Uh, how long have y'all been doing real estate closings? Well, I've been an attorney since 93, uh, so it really goes back that far. Um, my wife and I have had, uh, have had the office in Hayesville since 2001, so uh, uh, we've been there that long, and so uh, uh, that's primarily uh, uh, what, I've, what I've done all that time. All right, now let's get into it. Uh, in Georgia and in North Carolina, both states are closed by, a real estate transaction is closed by an attorney, which is different from other states. That's right. We get a lot of questions sometimes uh, from folks from other states, uh, particularly Florida, since we have so many Florida folks that uh, come in here, uh, uh, where uh, down there you don't have to have an attorney involved. Uh, title companies uh, apparently do everything there, and, uh, and so it's a new... Um, it's something new to them to find out that, uh, oh, I'm, if I'm buying or selling here, I'm going to have to uh, work with an attorney to do the closing. Yeah, uh, when I moved here from Florida, that was a little different. When I sold down there, it wasn't an attorney's office. <laughs> um, how long does the average closing take? If I'm a buyer or seller and my closing is scheduled and I come to your office, we sit down, uh, is there an average or does it vary? Well, it varies a little bit, but uh, usually um, when we're done with the seller, uh, the seller's documents uh, don't really, they really have a lot to sign, usually a uh, half dozen documents, and uh, uh, we can usually just fly through that and do the seller's part in usually uh, 10 to 15 minutes unless they have some kind of unusual questions uh, about what we're doing. Okay, and that's the seller. Tell me a little about the buyer side. Uh, the buyer is uh, usually a little bit longer unless, of course, uh, they're a cash buyer, meaning they don't have a, a not having a loan, uh, in which case they only have a handful of documents to sign as well. Um, uh, in that case, that's probably another uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes, but most of the time uh, the buyer is going to have a loan that we have to deal with, and uh, even a more sophisticated buyer who's done uh, several closings, we still need to go over a few things. So. Uh, uh, that, the buyer side uh, on a typical closing can go anywhere between probably 30 minutes to an hour. Wow. Okay. Do, are they always in the same room together, or how does that work, buyer or seller? Well, so, there's nothing wrong with that, but I prefer to have uh, uh, the buyer and, and the seller in the room separately simply because uh, it seems like we start talking all the top of each other, and you, you can also end up with a lot of people in the room at the same time. And so I always, always ask uh, the folks if they, if they, if everyone shows up together, you know, uh, is it okay if I do one side then the other? And most people are okay with that, um, especially if I do the seller first, because uh, usually we can sign the seller up, and then I, I can tell them, well, you know, you're free to go for a while. You know, you can go have lunch, or whatever, check back with us uh, in an hour or so, and um, uh, we should, hopefully we'll be finished. Very good, very good. Are there times that I can tell you? Well, I'm not going to ask. I'm, there are times uh, that I, I would just, as well, myself and the other agent, the parties not be at the attorney's oh, yeah. office at the same time. Maybe the negotiations have been a little heated. That's right. We don't want to be in the same building. Exactly. Uh, how long, on average, and, and this may change, I, I, I've seen some change myself over the last year. From the time you get it under initial contract, just a simple home. Today we're talking residential real estate, maybe a lot or a home. You get done the contract, the lawyer's office gets the uh, contract, okay, we're gonna go to closing. Well, how long does it currently take? Simple residential real estate. Well, usually 30 to 45 days, um, and um, uh, 
that's typically, typically what we have. Uh, we have issues and it can go out a little bit longer sometimes, uh, you know, uh, double the time, but normally uh, 30, 45 days gets it done. Okay, very good. I know at one point, I used to cash closings, we, we could get those done in a couple of weeks and then yeah. through through the crazy last couple of years, it was hard to get a cash closing scheduled in 30 days. So right. we, our system was just overwhelmed. Right. Right, yeah, it's, it's a little bit better now. Uh, yeah. Things have slowed down a little bit, so almost back to a normal pace, so we can, we can throw stuff together pretty quickly now. Yeah, and that's nice. And in our area, how much, just a ballpark, a range, does an attorney charge to sell a simple home, uh, residential real estate? What's an average charge? Well, usually, uh, usually the buyer, uh, the, the buyer uh, has most of the fees. And the typical home, um, which usually would involve some kind of a loan, by the way. So, but you're talking, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars to handle everything. Um, and then, uh, uh, in North Carolina, the seller has to pay has, has some fees to pay. Whereas in in, uh, in uh, Georgia. In Georgia, that's not necessarily the case, but uh, the seller might have uh, four or five hundred dollars in fees as well in North Carolina. But uh, probably in Georgia, they're not, they're they're only looking at some prorations and probably their uh, certainly their uh, their commission. Yeah, they held out. Yeah, I've noticed most of the time in North Carolina, about the only attorney fee a seller's charge is if they don't come to the closing and they have to do what they call mail away or something. Right. The law firm will charge a say 200 plus fee right. uh, for the mail away, something separate. Right, that's that's primarily because we have to handle this paperwork twice. Uh, right. And in addition to the fact, we also we have to have to charge uh, the, these FedEx fees, which are going up and up uh, like everything else these days. Uh, uh, so we have to uh, add that to it. Uh, and um, uh, but uh, we we can we can get those done just as uh, expeditiously as, as uh, almost as over there as long as we have some advanced planning and know and know where people are going to be. Okay, it's the day of the closing. What should I, if I'm a buyer or seller, what should I plan on bringing to the closing? Well, um, if you are a seller, we, we're probably going to need to make sure that. Um, um, that you bring uh, your uh, identification, your driver's license, which usually is not an issue, but uh, sometimes we'll we'll have a situation where where someone will have not uh, will not have brought their uh, proper identification. But uh, uh, that's really uh, once we have the, the bodies we need uh, uh, and they have the identification, because we have to notarize things, and we're ready to roll with the uh, seller. And then with the buyer, it's almost the it's almost the same thing. Uh, in the old days, the buyer might have to bring a cashier's check for their part of the closing, but anymore, uh, things are done uh, with electronic wire transfer. So as long as they show up uh, uh, with their identification uh, so we can notarize their signatures, we're usually good to go. So both parties have to come with ID? Yes, whether it's to our office or wherever it is they show up, if we have to send it off somewhere, uh, they're gonna have to show up uh, Wherever they wherever they go to sign the documents, they're going to have to show up with uh, with photo ID so that some notary can notarize their signature. Sure, sure. And if it's a mail away, uh, y'all have a notary show up at their house, or how does that work? Well, no, we usually leave it up to them. We we use we we've usually talked to them on the phone in advance and, and about the fact you know uh, certain documents are coming and uh, uh, you'll probably receive these documents uh, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, uh, go ahead and be ready uh, uh, for the fact that uh, some of these documents need to be notarized. So uh, you may need to, to go to uh, your local bank, or perhaps you have a friend who's a notary. Uh, but you're going to have to uh, get up with a notary uh, to uh, to get this stuff properly executed before you send it back to us. Rod, tell me a little about your family, a little about y'all's background. Well, I'm from here, actually from the area. I, I, I'm from uh, uh, grew up over around Murphy, uh, North Carolina, and so. Uh, my family is, is all from here. Um, my wife is uh, is uh, a Yankee, unfortunately. Uh, she, <laughs> I met her when she moved down here back in the early 90s. Uh, um, uh, actually, uh, her family had moved down here back in the 70s, but they were from uh, New York City. And so, uh, but she's... Uh, oh, that explains a lot about Dan. Yeah, you know okay, person, I so did you know not that. know that, but that makes sense. All right. That's right, yeah. So, but she's... Uh, She's, she's uh, kind of taking some of the sharp edges off. She kind of blends in pretty good now after all these years. 
Oh yeah, the sharp edges are off. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, tell me about your kids. Well, we got two kids. Uh, we're right in the middle of uh, a lot of activity here. We, our daughter's uh, 20 years old. She's going to be a senior in college this year. Uh, she goes to Davidson College down near Charlotte, and uh, she's um, she's applying to medical school. So that's that's uh, got got us doing a lot of extra hopping around here. Um, and um, she's an amazing young lady, Claire. Oh, I appreciate my that, wife yeah. uh, was one of her teachers, and she right. felt uh, privileged to get opportunity to teach her. She's Amazing, fine well, she, lady. She loves your wife. Uh, uh, your wife is a wonderful teacher and uh, and well respected. And um, and and uh, Claire just really thinks highly of her. And and um, but she's hoping to move on to, to medical school here. She's taken the MCAT recently. And and our son, uh, we've got a son who is 16. He's a, he's going to be a junior in Hazel High School. Uh, this year, so he's. I think he takes after Dina. He's got kind of an edge to it. <laughs> yeah, I think he does too. Claire, Claire, our daughter's more easy going, and um, and then accent and, and uh, more like me. But uh, but our son, he he definitely, uh, I think, is, is more like his mother. I, in my Facebook feed the other day, a picture of Claire popped up, and she was uh, in fatigues in a helicopter. Tell me a little about. That's right. Yeah, she's also an Army ROTC. Um, so, um, uh, in fact, she just got back from a month, uh, a month um, stay at uh, at Fort Knox in Kentucky. Every every summer, uh, they take these ROTC groups uh, for almost a month long outing somewhere for training and and initiation and so forth. They, for instance, last summer they went to the uh, West Point, uh, the uh, military academy in New York, in which she, she really liked that. That was very nice. And uh, and this year it was uh, Fort Knox, and so she's just back from that and. Uh, and uh, that's the that's the idea is uh, she'll uh, if she goes to medical school she'll uh, she'll give the uh, give back to the army at least six years because uh, um, uh, they they will be paying for the medical right. school. Right. Amazing young lady, amazing young lady. All right, now back to real estate. Uh, wire fraud. Uh, I the contracts now in Georgia, and North Carolina. That's a big. Uh, I'm seeing all kind of warning. Beware. Be careful. Uh, on the contracts now regarding wire fraud. Can you tell us a little about wire fraud? Well, we, have, we obviously have to be real careful about that. The state bar uh, is also on top of that, and they have been for several years. Uh, as an attorney, you, you have to make sure that you, uh, you have a secure account to hold uh, client funds, and you also have, a, have a, a significant duty to make sure when you transfer funds that they go where they're supposed to go. And, uh, and um, there's a lot, there's, um, there's a lot of, uh, of illegal entities out there uh, who would um, try to hack in uh, to your account, uh, hack into your email, and uh, hijack that money. And uh, so we have to be real careful. Uh, uh, usually we verify uh, uh, before we send something. Uh, and uh, oftentimes uh, we get phone calls uh, to us uh, 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 verifying us before funds are sent to us. So. Everybody's a lot more careful about that. There were some pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty serious accidents uh, uh, several years ago. Over time, uh, you know, some people lost some money uh, uh, inadvertently, uh, but, uh, attorneys and so forth. But uh, they're still responsible for the funds. And but uh, most, most everyone is very careful about that now. Yeah. And the way I've seen it work is you're a buyer. You've got a closing up and coming, and you get an email. And it looks like it's from the lawyer's oh. office. There might be one letter off, just something off, but it looks just like the emails you've been getting from the lawyer's office. And it says, "Why are your funds to this email?" Right. And you know, you 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 haphazardly just, oh, okay. And you don't call the lawyer's office. You don't follow through. You you don't look carefully, and you wire it, and it's a crook. It's got that email. That's account. right. Once it's gone, you can't get it back. Uh, and um, and uh, fortunately, like I said, uh, uh, most of us are wise about sure. now and more careful. But they they can they can, uh, they can um, ensnare uh, a uh, uh, maybe a new attorney or unexperienced attorney uh, uh, who who uh, doesn't know uh, that you have to really be careful about these things. Well, I don't really look at it as the attorney as much as it is the buyer who gets that email and oh, who right. thinks it's from the attorney. That's right. Uh, the, I, I, when I looked at it a while back, it looked like the biggest case, and this could have changed, but there was someone out, one of the western states, I can't remember if it was 
Wyoming somewhere, or Oklahoma. So uh, what was it? like a million dollars. Right. Got wired. So you just want to be careful when you're uh, wiring bonds you mean, for you a closing. You uh, have a healthy, uh, a healthy suspicion because uh, that, that's right. In the case of a, of a buyer, you know, you uh, try not to be, um, try not to be so gullible. Don't, don't just, uh, don't just um, go for the first thing you see. You really need to check into it. Right. Let's dive in a little. Uh, when you go to a closing, normally they provide you uh, an accounting of the funds. Right. Uh, the combined settlement statement. Right. I've got one here, the ALTA, ALTA Combined Settlement Statement. This one's for a closing in North Carolina. Right. And it's a seller, and for the seller, it shows uh, prorations. What what is normally prorated in North Carolina? And when I say prorated, the buyer pays for some of this, and the seller pays for some of it. What's typically prorated? Right. Well, typically it's taxes, uh, property taxes. When we do a closing. We want to we want to try to apportion the taxes between the buyer and the seller uh, in accordance with the, the amount of the time during the year they're going to actually own the property. So we try to split that up. Uh, so that each person pays uh, his his share of the taxes for that particular tax year, and uh, also a lot of the developments here have homeowners association, and so they they collect homeowners association dues to uh, take care of the roads and maybe a community water system and things of that nature. So we have to also account for that and uh, and make sure that um, uh, on that oftentimes the seller has already paid that because usually you pay for that uh, in January of each year. So we're usually collecting back from the buyer um, uh, to um, to reimburse the seller for the remaining part of the year that, uh, that, that they're going to own the property. Okay, and again, we're in North Carolina. There, the the seller actually contributes toward the attorney's fee. Something a little That's different right. from Georgia. That's right. I'm looking at one. We've got a closing fee and a seller document preparation right. uh, fee, and uh, then there was a wire fee uh, right. was charged. That's usually the fee that we usually charge uh, somewhat of fee uh, because we that, that's when we go to the bank to wire the, uh, the the seller's funds and also to wire the seller's payoff, the day of payoff. That, that takes some time and somebody has to go do that. And of course, make sure it's done right and goes to the right place. Well, and that, that brings me to the next one on the settlement statement was the payoff. Y'all y'all track down who's owed what, make sure they get paid. We do, that's part of the title examination we do. Uh, when we're doing uh, getting ready for closing um, the title examination is for the benefit of the buyer but it also is a benefit of the seller because uh, uh, it doesn't it, it can cause them a, a real problem if we don't pay off something that, that, that should be paid off at the closing right tell me a little about title examinations what does that entail in general well that's the main thing well, that's the main part of what we do in a closing uh, to get ready for a closing is um, uh, usually any buyer uh, uh, buying a home or even just uh, an improved property wants to have the uh, title of the property checked to make sure it's free of liens, uh, make sure there's not any unusual easements that are going to affect their, their, the use that they plan to uh, put it to, um, and um, uh, make sure the taxes are paid, of course, and things of that nature. So uh, that's that's the, I've always looked at that as being really the, the primary thing we do is, is, is doing a closing, is, is do the title examination and uh, uh, get ready to get the buyer their title insurance policy. All right. Hacky just gave me the one minute finger. Real quick, wrapping it up in the next minute. Uh, other costs in North Carolina. You've got the excise state or excise tax, the state deed taxes, and then commission. Right, we don't want to forget about the commission. That's near and dear to all our hearts. Uh, and so, uh, and as a closing attorney, we don't want to miss that because, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to run a seller down and after the closing and say, oh, by the way, uh, uh, I didn't get enough from you at the closing, so give us that commission back. Folks, today's guest has been local attorney Mickey Hendricks. He's also an agent, along with myself, at Century 21 Black Bear Realty. We really appreciate you listening. And as always, if you have any questions, give us a call at 828-557-9139. Thank you all.